Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this session, I will be explaining analysis of mechanical system. Normally, in mechanical system, motions can be different types. Like uh, motions will be either translational motion or we can call linear motion. Translational motions may be in translational manner or rotational motion rotational motion or combined one combined combined translational and rotational motion so in mathematical if you want to prepare a mathematical modeling you should know some basic principles like uh, Newton's law Newton's law which you are you are discussed during uh, PU classes which you studied in PU classes and uh, in D. Allenbert's principle, which you must have studied during engineering first year, D. Allenbert's principles. These are the basic principles which you require to construct the mechanical modeling in control system engineering. If you want to, pre if you want to prepare ma mathematical modeling in the mechanical system, you should know the following law, like Newton's law as well as D. Allenbert's principle. For example, consider the diagram. We have one mass M. We will be applying force F at a displacement of X. If mass, the object moves means we can say that we applied one force. That force can be calculated F is equal to M into A, where M is the mass of an object, M is the mass of an object, A is the acceleration, that means rate of change of velocity, M into D square X by D T square. This has been derived with the help of Newton's second law. Alright, unit of mass is in kilogram and uh, unit of acceleration meter per second square I think this will be derived with the help of Newton's second law similarly if you look at D. Allenbert principle let us have one mass m let it be m this will be f the displacement of x now, whenever you are applying a force, whenever you are applying a force on a moving object M, there will be automatically, there will be one inertial force, there will be one inertial, inertial force. For your information, there will be one inertial force against, against your direction, there will be one inertial force. Okay, that inertial force has to be considered. That inertial force will be Mn. Okay, now, if you apply D. Allenbert principle, one force will be acting on forward direction, another force will be acting on reverse direction. Then if you plot one free body diagram, let it be one point, so there will be one force that is actually F, uh, that will be moving on this point. There will be one another force that will be moving opposite, that is M. Then you can apply D. Allenbert's principle, that means F minus M A equal to 0. This principle is generally known as D. Allenbert's principle. It is closely similar to our KVL and KCL. You must have studied in electrical engineering. In KVL and KCL, closely similar to pitch of current law as well as pitch of voltage law, we can compare. It's analogous. analogous. It is analogous to that particular law. This rule should be known by yourself so that you can make the mathematical modeling, uh, especially for mechanical systems. Hope you understood. Now, while doing mathematical modeling of control engineering, the following elements are mainly involved. You need to have a basic knowledge on the following elements. The following elements are one of the most popular elements which are used in mathematical modeling in control system. The first element is mass. The second element is spring. 
usually will be denoting by k as a spring constant and the third one is friction friction or damper or you can call dashboard it will be denoting by the letter b these are the important element these are the most important elements which are used in mathematical modeling in mechanical systems mass spring and friction or damper or dashboard these three element should be familiar by you okay now let us discuss what is mass what is spring and what is the importance of damper or friction or dashboard now let us see the importance of mass first one is mass it will be denoting by the letter m you know mass is a property of a body which stores kinetic energy it's a property of a body it's a property of a body property of a body which stores kinetic energy i'll be denoting k now we can consider one diagram surface there will be one body which is having mass m it is trying to move at a distance or displacement of x everything i'll be writing in terms of time function time domain okay t okay if a force is applied on a body having the mass m then it is opposed to by an opposing force due to mass this opposing force is proportional to acceleration that means the opposing force that opposing force will be directly proportional to acceleration of a body so we can write f of t f of t that is equal to m into acceleration you know what is acceleration it is a rate of change of velocity acceleration acceleration is defined as velocity upon time dv by dt rate of change of velocity okay dv by dt so you can write m into d square x of t by dt square so this is the equation corresponding to mass okay then coming back to neglecting the initial condition if you want to neglect the initial condition so what you can do is you go for laplace transform i'll be explaining separate session for laplace transform that means you convert everything into s domain laplace transform you can neglect the ignore the initial condition then f of t become f of s f of s that is equal to m is a constant let it be m uh, what is the laplace transform of d square x of t by dt square a square into a square into x of s so you can uh, this is a condition by ignoring ignoring initial condition initial ignoring initial condition the second element is spring you can see the second element is spring you will be denoting by the letter k k is generally spring constant k spring is an element which stores potential energy is an element stores potential energy that is denoting p let us see the points regarding the spring if a force is applied on a spring k then it is opposed to by an opposing force due to elasticity of a spring that means the opposing force is proportional to displacement of the spring i'll be writing this point the opposing force the opposing force the opposing force is proportional opposing force is proportional to displacement of the spring displacement of the spring opposing force is proportional to displacement of a spring now let us see one surface there is no friction friction is negligibly small this is force 
f of t at a displacement of x of t this element is k now how to write the equation for force that means f of t f of t is given by k into x of t k into x of t hope you understood suppose consider another system we are having another system there are two masses m2 and m1 connected with a spring connected with a spring having the spring constant of k the displacement of first object that is x x2 of t this must be x1 of t the direction of force is in this manner f of t so what might be the value of f of t tell me what is the value of f of t f of t is given by here two masses should be considered two bodies m1 and m2 having the masses of m1 and m2 all right there is a spring that has been connected with the two bodies then you can write f of t is given by k into k into x1 of t minus x2 of t why because both are interconnected both are interconnected if you draw the free body diagram then it will be very easy this one point you can mark that is regarding m2 and you can mark spring then another point this is this should be m2 this should be m1 so that you can easily figure out what is the value of f of t f of t is given by k into x1 of t minus x2 of t if you want to ignore initial condition here also you can take the laplace transform i'll be ignoring initial condition then it become f of s equal to k into x1 of s x1 of s minus x2 of s you can close the bracket that means you you are taking laplace transform and you are ignoring the initial condition then analysis will be easier much easier okay if you want to consider the transfer function approach and all you need to convert into laplace model you have to you have to use the laplace transform and then and take the and take the transform we want to third one third element is friction or we can call it damper or dashboard varies from the literature normally denoting the letter b what is actually friction or damper or dashboard here we need to consider the friction friction also most important whenever there is a motion definitely there exists a friction okay that is a true fact friction may be between moving element and the fixer support or between two moving surfaces that point also you know if you want you can write friction may be between friction may be between moving element moving element and fixed element or between two moving surface or between two moving surfaces friction is having non linear in nature non linear in nature there are different frictions are available there are different varieties of friction for example viscous friction static friction static friction cool of friction however we will be mainly concentrating on viscous friction why because it is having major role if a force is applied on dashboard b then it is opposed by an opposing force due to friction of a dashboard that point you are supposed to note down 
if a force is applied on a dashboard B, then it is opposed by an opposing force due to friction of dashboard. The opposing force is proportional to velocity of the body. Opposing force. I will be writing that. The opposing force. The opposing force is proportional to velocity of the body. Velocity of the body. Please note down the point which I said before, which I said a bit early. Okay. Now what you can do? Consider the system. We need to consider one system. I will be marking one surface. Then there is one mass, one object is there. Then we will be denoting one dashboard. Dashboard is, will be representing in this manner. See. Dashboard will be like this. This is actually dashboard. I will be denoting B as a dashboard. Then displacement I will be denoting by X of T. And the force I will be denoting by the letter F of T. Okay. Now the force due to dashboard friction. That means FB. That is equal to B into V, where V is the velocity, that means B into, how can I write, velocity means dis, uh, dis, rate of change of displacement, dx by dt, dx of t by dt, dx of t by dt, dx of t by dt. If you want to ignore initial condition and go for Laplace transform, I will be writing Fb of s, that is equal to bs into x of s, b s into x of s. So this is one concept. One more thing. There are two bodies. Suppose I will be drawing the diagram once again for your better, better understanding. This is m1 and there will be one dashboard M2, this is X2, this must be X1, alright. Now, how to apply the theory over here? How to calculate the friction, frictional force? Fb that is given by B into d by dt of x1 of t minus d by dt of x2 of t. If you want you can take the Laplace transform then it become fb of s that is given by b into s. s become a common factor then x1 of s minus x2 of s. I will work out some of the examples so that you can easily construct the mathematical model of a given mechanical system. That will be pretty easier. Today I have discussed about what is the need for mathematical model. Why mathematical modeling is required. Thereafter I explain what are the different types of elements which are applicable in mechanical system. Normally what are the elements which are used in modeling of mechanical system? Mainly mass, then spring and friction or damper. I have explained the necessary equations to model those elements. In the upcoming classes I will be working out some examples to how to construct mathematical model for a mechanical system. Then I just given the hint what is a Laplace transform, why Laplace transform is required. And uh, these are the things uh, which I discuss in this session. Thanks for watching this video. Please share and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot.